Hello everyone, I'm Mahesh Jairaman, co-founder of Sepalika.com and thank you all very much for sharing our video on acupressure for heart health and making it go viral. The more we share such ancient wisdom, the more we can avoid hospitals and medicines. There's so much talk of antibiotic resistance these days and doctors are cautioning against us using antibiotics blindly, especially when we self-medicate rather than consult a doctor. This is a perfectly valid fear since overuse of antibiotics exposes all of us to more dangerous strains of bacteria that begin to adapt to our medicines and survive longer. But why do we use them? Surely no one likes taking medicine. It comes from the desire for instant results. We can't bear to be patient for even a single day anymore or give our body a chance to fight the bacteria or the virus on its own. Now, some situations can be charged with high emotions. So it feels like not giving medicines would be completely wrong. For example, parents tend to panic at the first sign of fever in their child. This is but natural and no one can bear to see their child in distress. But what most mothers don't realize is that every time we use a paracetamol to bring down a fever, we start a chain reaction towards antibiotic use and weaken the child's immune system deeply for the future. So if you want to avoid antibiotics, rule number one, don't bring down the fever with a paracetamol like a Panadol or a Crocin. Let me explain why a fever is one of the most beneficial things that your child can experience during their childhood. The bacteria or the virus is causing the child's distress, typically by replicating itself every few minutes. The fever is the body's way of slowing down the process of germ multiplication. It is a high fever that often prevents um, a second virus or a bacteria from invading your child when she is weakened from the first attack. As always, when you bring down a fever with a paracetamol, it leads to a cold, a cough or a chest phlegm in the next day or two, which is the secondary infection, which could have been avoided if only we didn't take the paracetamol. At this stage, when the child has the chest infection, the child needs a trip to the doctor and the child needs an antibiotic. So treating a fever with medicines to bring down the temperature gives a free license to the virus or the bacteria to spread in an unrestrained manner. The truth is, all naturopathic doctors will tell you this. You don't have to panic even if your child's temperature gets to 102 or 103 degrees Fahrenheit or if you're watching this elsewhere in the world, 38 or 39 degrees Celsius. This is actually the correct range of a fever. Repeated fever reduction during the childhood can suppress the immune system. Each time you don't allow the child's immune system to do its job, you push the child towards the likelihood that the next infection may need antibiotics. I don't want to um, alarm you unnecessarily, but in epidemiological research studies, that is whole social studies, repeated fever suppression with paracetamol has been linked to increased risk of cancer later in life. Children whose fevers are allowed to run their natural growth grow up to be uh, much stronger with better immune health than kids who get fever medicines each time. So does this mean that you sit around and do nothing and watch your child suffer? Absolutely not. There are simple things that you can do at home to comfort the child when the body fights the infection naturally. While this works for kids, it's relevant for grown-ups as well, who incidentally, as we all know, behave like children each time they have a high fever. So here's what you can do. Number one, hold and comfort the child. Not only does this help her calm down and be less irritable, the soothing feeling calms the immune system and uh, lets it do its job in peace. <clears throat> Number two, a simple cold compress, dipping a clean uh, cotton towel or a small towel in cold water and applying it to the forehead, to the back or the nape of the neck, the armpits and the soles of the feet can all help to bring the fever down at the surface level and comfort the child. Number three, if the child is ready to eat, give the child something. Bone broth is ideal because it's rich in nutrients and even a couple of spoons will do the trick. But if not bone broth, if you're vegetarian, anything the child is willing to eat, even a few bits of any kind of food will help to bring the fever down to a 101, 103 uh, level at which you don't have to medicate. Number four, 
high fevers beyond 103 are not dangerous per se but at high fevers the metabolism speeds up and the risk of dehydration is higher this can cause hypoglycemia or low blood sugar and if you leave it untreated it can even lead to fits so to prevent this the simple thing is give your child fresh fruit juice diluted with clean water 50 50 mixture of something like an orange juice and water will work just fine you can even use pure coconut water without any dilution this will help to keep the cells well hydrated and keep the blood sugars in a normal range. Number five, if the child is unable to produce a high fever or has a cyclical fever, which comes only late in the afternoon at around four or five, then there is a good chance that the virus will try to assert itself again the next day at the same time. To break this cycle, cover the child up in blankets to produce a higher fever. By doing this, you will often find that the patient sweats and the fever breaks. Along with this, the child will get a full night's rest and the infection will usually lose its strength by the next morning. Number six, use a simple color treatment to help your child to fight the fever. It almost sounds unbelievable, but parents tell me it works like magic at least 75% of the time. So take a simple, no, um, you know, water-based, non-toxic sketch pen and make the marks as I'm showing you. So on the index finger, the middle joint, make a mark that runs all the way around it. Okay. And that's how that looks. You can see it once I show it to you close up. That's a simple black color that runs all around the index finger on the middle joint. Okay. And you do the same thing on the other hand as well. So usually since you're making it for uh, another person, you will find it's a lot easier to do. Since I'm a right hander, I'm finding it a little cumbersome to do it on my right hand using my left hand but there you go so you can see that too next you make a similar marking at the base of the thumb only the left thumb this time the entire left thumb all the way around it you make a black color mark okay and that's it so how does this work uh, well color therapy works by having a certain frequency at which all the colors vibrate and our body is made up of cells as well and those cells also vibrate at certain frequencies and over time it has been studied and understood which colors vibrate at what frequency so making these black marks on both of the middle joints of the two index fingers and the base of the left thumb all the way around can help to reduce the infection in your child's body thereby naturally bringing down the fever not suppressing it so if you would like to not use antibiotics with your child learn to be a little bit patient use these simple home tips that we have shared with you including the color therapy and you will be able to not have to resort to antibiotics to help your child during a fever so stay tuned, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have given the link right here below for more such videos and informative updates so that we can all live vibrant and healthy lives with the least of medicines and visits to the hospital. Wish you all vibrant health and well-being.